So let's then summarize in one place the way we represent resistors, inductors, and capacitors in the Laplace or frequency domain. As we've seen, the, resist the resistor value in the Laplace domain is simply the same as the resistor value in the time domain. And because there's no energy stored in it, there, it, there's no energy storage capacity in a resistor. So we have just the resistor here of value, same value R. With the inductor, with an initial current of I0, we can represent it in either the series form of a series impedance, S times L, and a voltage source equal to or with a value of L times I0, where L is the value of the inductor and I0 is the initial current in the inductor. Or through a source transformation, we saw that we can also represent this inductor with its initial current in the Laplace domain as a parallel structure of this form where the current source is I naught over S. And finally, the capacitor with its initial voltage can be represented in either a series representation with the impedance 1 over SC and a series voltage source equal to V naught, the initial voltage on the capacitor, divided by S or through a source transformation we can then replace this with a parallel representation with a current source equal to C V naught and a parallel impedance 1 over S C. We will use these representations then to transform a time domain circuit into the Laplace domain, replacing resistors values with a resistor, replacing inductors with initial currents in either with either this or this, depending upon whether a parallel configuration or a series configuration is more convenient. And similarly, we can replace the capacitor or transform the capacitor with its initial voltage into the frequency domain as a series impedance of 1 over SC with a voltage source V0 over S. Um, and uh, or a parallel configuration with that same impedance 1 over SC and um, a current source equaling or of value C V naught.